All right, so let's talk about the final exam. <clears throat> Your final exam is going to be six problems. So final exam, uh, it's going to be six problems, each worth the same amount. Um, you have to do all six. They all count the same. They all count. Uh, problem number one, I'm going to give you the topics <clears throat> so you know what to prepare for, what to study for. Problem number one will be a projectile problem. I think this is a classic dynamics problem, these projectiles. Uh, it's been a while since we've done them, but go back to those, um, and, and in the next two uh, lectures, we're going to go through some of these example problems to, to kind of refresh them in your, um, in your head. Uh, but problem number one will be, be a projectile. I think and I hope it'll be a good, not easy per se, but a good straightforward problem for you to start your final exam uh, with. Problem number two will be a, a particle particle free body diagram. Right? Remember those problems where we were summing the forces in X equals M A X. We were summing the force in Y equals M A Y. Uh, or we might have been summing the forces normal, summing the forces tangential, right? Equals M A tangential. M a, oops, M a normal, M a tangential. What is A normal? A normal is uh, V squared over R or R omega squared, A normal, right? But these were particles we, we did towards the beginning of the semester. Just summing the forces equals mass times acceleration. Uh, go back and look at those will it slip problems. You know, will it slip problems. Um, friction, friction, friction. Go back and look at friction, right? Should I use static friction, kinetic friction? Should I plug it all the way up to mu s n? Should I just leave it as f f? Uh, so a, a wide variety for problem number two. Not going to be a good way for you to memorize every type of problem. Just think about the the process, right? Summing the forces in one direction equals mass times acceleration in that direction. Summing the force in another direction. M times acceleration in that direction, um, and, and and you know look at those problems where I think on our test you've got you know a, a rope you know maybe doing the L total but this we had a free body diagram for this one free body diagram for that one make sure your free, your directions uh, agree I think that was a big problem on that test that we had earlier this semester. All right, so that's problem number two. Particle free body diagram. Problem number three, uh, hard again, you're not going to be able to memorize this one, but it's either going to be a constant, constant acceleration, or not constant, right, or derivative uh, integral. Um, it could be linear. That's how we started out first day of class, you know, linear. Or it could be rotational. So, so, and, and, and I, I'm not going to guarantee this, but I would look back at these problems, you know, t different size pulleys that are connected by a belt, you know, these gears and that are t turning each other and, and that had one thing down here. Those types of problems right here. Generally, I like to give those on a final exam. And be careful because I could tell you, hey, this is turning with a constant angular um, acceleration. Um, or I could say it's turning with, with some, you know, theta or something with a time that's not constant. Uh, so this one also, a wide variety that I could throw out here for you. Um, the main thing, determining, all right, is this constant or is this not constant? And then probably, and so figuring which equation should I use. You've got an equation sheet. You've got your formula sheet, but knowing which derivative, or, or am I doing a derivative or an integral, you know, knowing, knowing which equation should I use, where should I use it? Um, and then uh, being able to jump, you know, from here to here, from inner to outer, from this gear to the other gear, from one pulley to another pulley. Um, so, yeah, that will be problem number three, kind of a wide variety um, 
right there. All right, problem number four. Problem number four will be a combination similar to the the um, take home portion of the your last exam number three. <clears throat> Um, will be a velocity, you can choose a relative velocity method or instantaneous center of zero velocity method, you can choose, and an acceleration problem. We only have one choice, the relative acceleration method. So look at all those problems we did in the relative velocity section. All those problems we did in the instantaneous center of zero velocity section, and you can choose which uh, of those two methods you want to do for the first half of the problem, and then you use the omega that we find for the first half um, to find the acceleration using the relative acceleration method. Okay, so th th this is pretty recent stuff that we've been doing that I think you can do. All right, problem number five is a rigid body free body diagram. A rigid body free body diagram where we are summing the forces in X equals MAX. We are summing the forces in Y equals MAY. And then we are summing the moments equals I alpha. <clears throat> if we sum the moments about G, it's IG alpha. If we sum the moments about a fixed point, it's I about that fixed point alpha. But if we sum the moments about point P, it's IG alpha plus MAD. Remember those problems right there. But, you know, hope, maybe, hopefully, you can just sum the moments about G. Now, it could be that, and this is the acceleration of point G, of point G, the I of point G. Um, or if this is rotation, if this is rotation, we will be summing the forces normal equals MA normal. Summing the forces tangential equals MA tangential. And then probably still summing the moments equals M, or summing the moments equals I alpha. So it could be translation where we want to sum the forces in X and Y. It could be rotation where we probably want to sum the forces normal tangential. How do we decide, well, what is point G doing? Is point G going in a normal tangential path? So point G, if point G has normal tangential acceleration, let's sum the forces normal tangential. But if point G is just has X and Y acceleration, let's sum the forces X and Y. All right, remember, problem five and problem number two, um, I like to define my axis according to the acceleration and in this case, according to the acceleration of point G, what is point G doing? And then let's define our axes. Let's define our axes that way. All right. And problem number six, you knew what this one was going to be. Uh, conservation of energy. Um, rigid body. Rigid body conservation of energy. That V plus T plus non-conserved work equals V plus T. These have, you know, two things for every one, right? The MGH, or let's, let's just say, the potential energy in gravity, potential energy due to a spring, the linear kinetic energy, rotational kinetic energy, FDM theta, gravity, spring, linear, rotational. All those problems that we've been doing. I think you, we've done a, a, a good, a, a lot of, um, of those conservation of energy problems. Okay, so your exam. Six problems, each worth the same amount. Um, you will have two and a half hours to do them. This is the semester that we are at home. You're taking it at home. So I'm going to give you an extra 15 minutes. So two hours and 45 minutes uh, because you're going to have to take pictures of your work, scan them in as a PDF. Uh, we're going to do this in Zoom. Um, we'll talk about this, um, um, but you have to take it during your um, exam slot. Uh, and I'm going to be real strict about that because 
y'all because y'all are taking pictures of your work, and so you know once you take pictures, it, it's it's out there. So I don't want people um, sharing or anything. So I'll I'll be watching y'all in Zoom, and you've got to take it during your final exam time period for your class. This also means that my one section of my dynamics is going to have a completely different test than the other section of my dynamics because y'all are taking them on completely different days. Um, and so once that first day is over, I assume that all those answers are out there. So I'm going to create a completely new problem. All right, so the next two lectures, we I'll be going over um, a few examples of each of these six types of problems. But I can't show you everything, you know, I can't reteach everything. Uh, you can go back, and I've got videos this semester. I have videos of all of my lectures, either in Panopto or look at that discussion uh, where I, t I posted the videos of every class. Um, I even labeled kind of the topic. So if you want to go back and look at the topics, you can go back and look at homework, you can go back and look at tests. You can go back and look at the in-class problems. You've got a lot that you can go back and learn, relearn, uh, to get ready for this final exam. So um, we will, I'm looking at this as rigid, we will, um, I don't know, have fun the next two uh, lectures, um, going back down memory lane, uh, looking at some of the um, examples of problems to be prepared for for the final exam. Okay?